Hello, this is Tony from Sonata Arctica, and you are listening to Cuero y Metal. Stay tuned. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches tengan todos y sean bienvenidos a una nueva entrevista aquí en el canal de YouTube de Cuero y Metal en Córdoba. No dejen de suscribirse para estar al tanto de todo nuestro contenido. Hoy nos despertamos un poco más temprano para poder hablar en exclusiva con Tony Caco, histórico frontman de Sonata Ártica, por la salida de su nuevo disco. Tony, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenido a Cuero y Metal Radio. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. I'm doing good. A lot of interviews, which is, of course, a good thing when you are you have released something new. So yeah, happy to be here. Bien, finalmente tenemos la primera entrevista, la primera entrega, perdón, de Acoustic Adventures. Eh, sé que la pandemia se encargó de demorar un poco la publicación de este álbum. ¿Cómo ha sido la recepción de sus fanáticos y de la prensa para estas primeras 12 canciones? So far, you know, I'm, I'm living in the echo chamber of my social media and, and Sonata Arctica social media, <laughs> you know. I, I've seen a couple of uh, 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 reviews as well, and they've all been really positive. And, and especially the social media part, you know, I don't think we've ever, ever anywhere gotten it, such a positive uh, feedback from any of our releases before. So fans seem to love it, and, and that's, of course, a good thing. There have been, like, I, I think I read one or two negative things, But they were like, this is not power metal, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> which is pretty obvious, taking the, it's an acoustic thing. But yeah, so it's been, it's been really good. <laughs> A pesar de que habrá un volumen 2 para estas versiones acústicas, eh, ¿fue dif difícil la elección de canciones que formarían parte de este material? Um, we recorded two, both of these albums at the same time in the studio based on, on the tour that we had in 2019 and then added a few songs. And uh, once we started, once everything was uh, uh, recorded and, and ready, it was just a matter of, you know, choosing which song goes where. And we wanted to make two albums that are equally balanced, like roller coaster ride, both of them the same way. For me, it's really hard to say which one is better. It's, it's probably depends on, on the listener, obviously, but you know, uh, it was just, you know, tossing songs around to make them balanced. That was the idea. And uh, I don't know, it was just an accident that we don't have any Ecliptica songs, for example, from our debut album uh, on the first volume, but there will be some on the second one. So it was just, you know, finding the balance. That was the key. Uh -huh. uh, Tony, ¿qué podés adelantarnos de la parte 2 de estas aventuras acústicas de Sonata? Well, um, apart from that, it has three songs from Eclipsica. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> uh, if you check our, if you check out the set list that we played uh, on the tour in 2019, the Acoustic Adventures tour in Europe, that's pretty much what you get. The rest of the songs that <laughs> you don't have on the volume one, and and then uh, some on top of that. So, what could I say? You you have Full Moon, Letter to Dana, and and then something else. <risa> eh, a diferencia de lo que muchos creían, eh, Sonata Ártica comenzó con los shows acústicos antes de tener planeado el disco. ¿Esto les ayudó a llegar más preparados al estudio para grabar el Acoustic Adventures? Yes, we had a scheme. It was a plan for us to uh, get in studio and, and make these albums, and, and that requ required from our part some convincing. We, we needed to convince our label and management and everybody. First of all, that they would allow us to go on tour because nobody thought the albums would be a good idea. They hadn't heard anything. So we needed to go on tour first to get all the songs together for the tour and, and then go on and, and uh, uh, tour the European area with those tracks. And, and uh, we had our label people and a lot of other people obviously coming to see the show and they loved what they heard. So they gave us a green light and then, okay, these songs really work live and, and go in studio and let's make some albums out of this. And uh, so it was a scheme. <laughs> We had a plan to go in studio all along, all along and, and uh, uh, do, doing the tour and having it before it was just, you know, it was of course, in hindsight, it's of course, perfect marketing. We created our own market. People, a lot of people could already hear what we had done here and uh, acoustically and, and uh, they, they were asking that you should put this on the album and ha, oh, we have a plan already. And of course, you know, we had this uh, live stream thing uh, in 2020, in the summer, and, uh, and uh, that also helped. It was an acoustic thing, and we played some of these tracks there as well. So, yeah, it, it's such, such a thing. Yeah. 
Bien, eh, hace pocos días publicaron el videoclip de la canción For the Sake of Revenge. Eh, ¿Qué puedes contarnos acerca de este increíble video? Bueno, fue shot en Kemi, en Kemi Region aquí. We used Kimi a swimming hole and <laughs> and have found a lot of beautiful locations here. We, we are also a little bit lucky that uh, we had a lot of snow in trees and everything looked really super beautiful. It does so often, but if you go out right now, the trees are bare. They are there's only frost on it on them, and but we had a lot of snow and everything. It was just like a perfect setting. It looked like further up north than we actually were and. Uh, it, We shot for two days and uh, I had to run out in the snow and everything. And, uh, and uh, also one thing that we were really lucky with that we could have had minus 30 Celsius degrees of frost at the time, or we could have had like plus 10. It depends on your luck, but we had like minus 10, which was perfect. It, it wasn't too cold. I, I was able, I, I managed with uh, whatever clothing I had on and And uh, I think the outcome is just wonderful. It was uh, directed and, and produced by a, a pretty famous Finnish um, uh, producer, uh, Jonas Berihel. And he's, he's, he's done a lot of documentaries, award-winning things here in Finland, and also got some uh, international attention with, with them. And, and it was just a, one of the best, unless probably the best video shoot we have ever had. It was so easygoing and... A lot of professional people working there, so mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Tony, el último álbum eléctrico de la banda data de hace tres años atrás. Hay planes de un nuevo álbum de Sonata Ártica próximamente, no acústico, claramente hablando. Yeah, yeah, like a normal, that, like eleventh <laughs> real album of Sonata Ártica. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a plan for that. We uh, have the idea is to hit the studio early next year and, and get it recorded, and hopefully, if everything goes well with that, you know, get it out also in 2023 so and and you know taking the times we have been living those plans that you make with studio are the safest right now you know it's easy to say that we really will go there when it comes to touring it's still there are still like a lot of uncertainty you never know what's gonna happen with those but but you know studio thing that that's up for next year for sure and, and hopefully we get the album done then eh, Tony, en abril comenzarán un tour latinoamericano que los traerá nuevamente a la Argentina, donde van a estar celebrando su 25 aniversario. ¿Qué puedes contarnos sobre este tour? ¿Están ansiosos por salir de gira nuevamente? Oh, yes, we are. We were really lucky also to, to be able to start the tour already last year from Finland. We had a couple of weeks of tours, uh, shows here in Finland, and, and that was a lot of fun. We are playing uh, songs from every album pretty equally uh, on the show and then that's the show that we are bringing also to Latin America and Argentina as well so it, it's gonna be great it was supposed to be Talvi tour originally but you know obviously that did not <laughs> pan the way it was supposed to and uh, you know if we for whatever reason can't come back this like now in April we will have to postpone the, uh, the tour for another year then it's likely going to be the tour of the next album once again. But, but we really were keeping my fingers crossed that all things go well and nothing, 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 nothing new comes up when it comes to the pandemic shade. So, so, so we can make this thing happen. Yeah. Eh, sé que quizás es un poco apresurado, pero ¿qué puedes adelantarnos del set list que estarán tocando el próximo 12 de abril en el Teatro Flores de Buenos Aires? Well, it, it's going to be pretty darn close to what we played in Finland. So if you Google the set list, you know, <laughs> and, ru and ruin your surprise, you know, go and check it out from some, some you know, there are set lists, set lists available on the internet online anywhere. So, so go and check there. I can't recall. But like I told you, it, it's pretty equally. We have songs from every album that we have ever released. So it's like worthy tour for the 25 years of Santarctica. Yeah. Not really... We don't have a like emphasis of, of, of the early days or anything like that. It's like equal amount of songs from all the albums. I think I recall it that way anyways. Eh, no hace falta repetir una y otra vez que Sonata Ártica es una banda muy querida en nuestras tierras. Basta con mirar los videos filmados por los fanáticos a través de YouTube para notar que juegan de local, si se puede decir aquí en Argentina. Para ir terminando con esta entrevista, te invito a que le dejes un mensaje a tus fanáticos que estarán mirando esta conversación, por supuesto, a la espera de la llegada de Sonata a Sudamérica. 
I am happy and not embarrassed at all to say that every time someone somewhere around the world asks me where we have had our best show and where's the best audience, I, and I have always said in Argentina, like the shows that we've had in, in Buenos Aires, for for example, those are just mind blowing. It's it's such an amazing feeling to be on stage when when you are so passionate about music and and uh, everything and being there and it's 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 always an amazing experience and i'm really looking forward to meeting you all again so please do take care of yourselves and those around you and and we can make this world work again it's not only music but there are many many uh, branches and in industries that have really really suffered from this pandemic and we need to make it go away now so let's be careful so we can Make it happen. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you for the time with us, okay? Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. See you soon, hopefully. <laughs> See you in the next interview, face to face. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> keep our fingers crossed. <laughs>